Now welcome to your video on uh, learning capital budgeting. Now capital budgeting is a very important concept, one of the most important concepts in finance. And it's quite easy to calculate. Let me show you how easy it is to calculate. You already learned the formula and basic time value of money. Uh, the formula basically is nothing more than this. It takes each one of these cash flows here and it's going to discount them back at whatever rate you've determined is the risk of owning or purchasing this, whatever this is, this long-term asset, if you will. So in essence, I'll do the first two. So the first one would be 300. And I'm going to divide it by 1 plus the rate R, which is 30%. And then I'm going to raise it to the first power. Then I'm going to add it to the next one here, 400. I'm going to discount this one back over two periods, so I have to divide it by the second. Now, uh, in finance, sometimes instead of dividing, we like to multiply by its reciprocal. It makes it a little bit easier, so instead of, like I'll just do the second one here, the 400, instead of dividing, I would multiply it by its reciprocal and then add that to the first one and so on and so forth. Now, since we have to each one of these and add them up, there's where the N comes in. So really it's nothing more than a, um, the net of all of these cash flows discounted back. Sometimes you'll see in the formulas the summation because they're adding them up. And that's kind of the longhand math behind it. This is important because this is the basis of determining the value of any business, uh, stock valuation. Uh, so the three uh, parts that we need for this, we need to have uh, the inflow, in this case for these two here, it's a thousand dollars, I got three of them. Uh, it, we need to know the cash flows that it will generate by purchasing whatever this is. And then there could be a terminal value like a salvage value or something of that nature. Uh, so kind of taking consideration all of those. Now uh, something to remember, to think about here is that Excel will not let me put this zero in. This is unusual most if not all your calculators all your calculators and I'll show you another app in a moment that does it always this way so Excel is a little cumbersome as it makes you calculate uh, the net present value by hand so let's go ahead and calculate this first one here and then apply it to this one here and then we'll go ahead and take a look at that website I was mentioning and then we'll end with this part over here so let me go ahead and calculate it uh, to find the formula, I can go to Finance and look up NPV. And there's NPV. Or since I recently used it, I'm going to go ahead and use it here. Here's NPV. If you take a look, the first thing it asks for is the rate, and there's the rate. Now the rate has to be a, uh, has to have a percent sign behind it, so it converts it to its rate. And then I just have to add each value in. Value number one. It's just did this math here. It's taken that 300 and discounted back at 30 percent, and there it is. Now I want to put value 2, it's going to do this one and add them together. There's value 2, and now it's just done this math here. Uh, I'm going to go to value number 3, value 4, and pull this down a little bit so I can do value 5, and one more for value 6. So there's your answer. So I'll ask the simple question, would you spend $1,000 for something that is worth $1,141.30? I think most people would agree they would. Now in order to count just the next one, I'm just going to grab this fill handle right here. You can see it changes. Grab the fill, oops. Grab the fill handle and pull this across. And I've just did the next one. If you take a look at the next one, it's is higher. It's it's worth $168.34 more than this one. It's because the timing of the cash flows. I have more cash flows that are larger coming in earlier versus later. So it's it's the timing of the cash flows can also alter the problem. Now, if these two were mutually exclusive, which means I'd have to pick one or the other, I'd pick this one because it's worth $168, where this is only worth $141, more than the initial outflow. But if you had both of them to choose, you'd pick them both because neither of them are negative, or if they were negative, it tells me this number is greater than what it's worth, which means it costs you more than what it's worth, and you would not do it. Now, let me show you a quick app on this one. Here's a uh, financial calculator. I'll go to what it looks like in a second. The, you can download. This is what it looks like on your phone. So I went to the RNPV function. I did the first one. I put in 30% in the cash flows. And all I have to do is click on this and calculate. And there's my 141. See, it took a zero cash flow. It took the negative cash flow. And that's the difference between the 1,000. There it is, the 1,000 and the, the, uh, the value. So it shows me it's worth. It's positive. Uh, and it gives me its internal rate of return as well. It's got to be greater than 30% because it's a greater number here, and it's actually 35.94. It's a very useful app. Uh, it 
those websites called FN Calculator. This is what it looks like. I went right here to this, and you can get download for your apps and things of that nature. Let's go back to the video because I want to show you another concept. Sometimes we use 10%. Now, 10% is not a good thing. I always use the JD Wentworth Need Cash now. I see that commercial, and I know he uses a much larger rate because he'd rather give you this amount of money or this amount of money for your cash flows than a 10% because he would not want to give you, and you can see why we do this, almost $2,000. He'd rather give you $1,000 for it. Uh, and if you get a chance to do the math, it's uh, on some of those commercials you find out, you, you, you find that. The, uh, I'm sure he's using that discount rate of about 30% to find out these calculations. Now, finally, I want to look at IRR. Now, IRR is a little different in Excel in that it does let us put zero cash flow. So I've used it, so I'm going to go to recently used in IRR, and it's real simple. All I have to say is this. So you're telling me I have to spend $1,000 for these future cash flows. Therefore, what is my rate of return? All I have to do is guess. So I can guess or I can put the values right here by grabbing the first one and pulling them right down. And it's telling me that they're close to 38.84 percent. That's how we do IRRs. Now, finally, I want to come over here and look at why I use such a high rate of return. This is a business, and a business has assets, it has liabilities, and has owner's equity. There's your permanent balance sheet equation, uh, and they usually add these two together to get this. And we 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 borrow money, we sell chunks of companies so that we can buy assets that generate revenues. But how much does it actually cost? Well, here, if you go back to a basic finance class, that's the calculation that we determine by which this cost. And this is the calculation we determine by which this cost. And I'm going to put some numbers here. Let's say I added this up, and in purple here is your risk-free rate, your treasury bills. Uh, and I put in the default and the liquidity and the maturity risk premium. I get 8%. Now, here's the calculation called the CAPM, in which I took the risk-free rate and the risk of the market minus risk-free rate time beta. Looks familiar. I got 12%. Julie, stocks will cost more than bonds because they're higher risk. And the cool thing about a bond is it's all tax deductible. So let's put a, a tax rate of about 35%. And finally, let's weight it. The weight part just tells me of this, what is this, and this. So in essence, half of my capital structure is debt, and the other half is equity. So if I looked at the balance sheet, and this was 100, that would be 50, and that would be 50. If that was 200, that would be 100, and it would be 100 half here and half here. Now let's go ahead and just calculate the cost. The cost here is really simple. Uh, I'm going to use the Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to say equals and here's the cost. And I'm going to multiply it by, first of all, I'm going to have to change, I'm going to reduce because of tax. I'm only going to actually pay about 65% of that uh, or 1 minus the 35%, whatever is easier for you. I'm going to do 1 minus 35% and I'm going to close the brackets. And that's really truly the cost. Uh, the cost over here is the same because we can't tax deduct any of it. Now the weight was 50%, so I just say this was 50%. So 50% of my costs are here. Return. Now I come over here and say, well, the other 50% of my cost are here. Therefore, the total cost would be this plus this and I have my answer. The cost to raise money for this company is 8.6 percent. So you can see that I have to have some uh, wiggle room on the bone just in case uh, I don't get the 8 percent. See I asked for 30 percent. It cost me 8 percent. Now there's a really cool website also if you want to calculate this it's called That's Whack. All I have to do is type in the ticker symbol of the company. And I'll just go ahead and type in Disney uh, and calculate whatever's cost of capital. And now I can pull down here and it gives me, there it is, 12.48. Now if you use the 12.5%, you can see why Disney, when they determine whether or not they're going to open a new theme park or spend money, they better have a, a good return because anything higher than the 12.848% adds to the value of the company, adds to the value of what they purchase. And that's what they want to do. They want to add value for the stockholders. So I hope this helps with your uh, capital budgeting homework.